It might sound like a Hollywood movie plot, but it could soon become a reality. Grand plans to bring the Tasmanian tiger back from the dead. And it raises the question, should scientists be playing God? Martin King investigates. Doesn't look like much, does it? This is Tassie tiger DNA. But the question is, can this be turned into this? A living, breathing thylacine. I think it's the dream, right? It's a dream Professor Andrew Pask is determined will become a reality. How confident are you, like from one to 10, you can bring back the Tassie tiger? I'd say I'm a solid nine. The last thylacine on Earth, according to scientists, was this fella. He died in a Hobart Zoo in 1936. The rest of the population was wiped out by bounty hunters and farmers, sponsored by the Tasmanian government. It would be a, a world first, an incredible achievement, I think, for the whole planet to be able to think that we can actually restore some of the damage that we've caused, bring some of these really key species back. Now, you'd think bringing back such an important species would excite all and sundry, but no. The Tassie Conservation Trust has anything but a tiger in its tank. We feel guilt and we want to make up for that. We want to overcome that guilt and bring back animals. And then we're just forgetting that it's really much more complicated. Peter McGlone from the Trust says it's not a worthy idea and we should let sleeping dogs or tigers lie. The reason why Tasmanian tiger or thylacine was hunted to extinction was primarily because of sheep farming. And I think it's a really fair question to ask the sheep farmers of Tasmania today, would you be able to coexist with thylacine? Well, they never ate sheep, so we know that they ate much smaller prey than that. So the whole mythology that they were going out there and eating farmer sheep and things is exactly that. It is, it's a myth. This fossilised tree sap, which we call amber, waited for millions of years with the mosquito inside until Jurassic Park scientists came along. Reinventing the Tassie tiger seems very Jurassic Park, but Professor Pask says there's no correlation. How'd you do this? I'll show you. For dinosaurs, there's no DNA left in dinosaur bones, so we don't have to worry about a Jurassic Park happening. But for more recently extinct animals, we can certainly, anything is within the realm of, of bringing back. For years, the good professor has dedicated his life to the rebirth of the Tassie tiger. From his labs and office here at the University of Melbourne, he's been constantly handicapped by resources and funding. But a recent donation of $5 million from a private benefactor has supercharged the prof and the project. So we think it's really reasonable to think within, you know, 10 years time, we would certainly have a, a Tasmanian tiger cell that we can start that process of actually turning that into a whole living animal. When you try to bring back what previously was the, the, the top species, there's gonna be an impact. The Tassie tiger's only been gone for the environment for, you know, 80 or so years. It's not that long a period of time that that ecosystem has changed enough that you couldn't put that animal straight back into that environment. Your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. Australia is a global leader in wildlife extinctions, and now the professor says we can start to reverse the calamity. Oh, I, I love this, this project. The thought of being able to bring this incredibly unique, amazing marsupial back is, is just, I think it would be an amazing feat of science. And this is the big fella here, isn't it? Yeah. Or well, the big lady, I'm not sure, is it yeah. male or female, do we know? I presume that's a male because it's a really big skull, so that's probably from a big mature male. And you can see he's been shot through the nose there. So this was one of the animals that was collected as part of the bounty scheme that they had in Tasmania to actually eradicate the Tasmanian tiger. They were paying one pound per dead animal that you brought in. And back at the time, you know, in the early 1900s, that was big money for a farmer. And he's the source of the Tassie tiger DNA, perfectly preserved Tassie tiger fetuses. They're the blueprint for the rebirth of the tiger. So how do you grow a thylacine? It begins with its genome, or DNA. That's already been sequenced, and over the years, Melbourne Uni has engineered a complete genetic code to build the animal. 
The next thing we need to do is then have a living cell from a closely related animal. And for us, we're going to use a marsupial mouse called a dunnart to be that sort of template, if you like, for building our Tasmanian tiger. So then we compare both of their DNA and we figure out all the places that the Tasmanian tiger was different from that marsupial mouse. And we take that marsupial mouse DNA and we engineer in all of those changes. And then essentially what we're doing is creating a Tasmanian tiger living cell. Neil, where are you? Just over here, mate. Neil Waters says, good on you, Professor, but I've got news for you. They still exist right here in the Tassie wilderness. A year ago, we caught up with Neil after he claimed a genuine sighting of a Tassie tiger in northeast Tasmania. Neil, have you ever seen a thylacine in the flesh? I saw one walk straight past here once in 2014. Here? Yeah, straight out here. Neil has his own project, dozens of trail cameras, a network of believers who report sightings, a host of photos, but so far, no conclusive proof. So Neil, have you considered the possibility that maybe the thylacine doesn't exist? No, I haven't. There's just too much anecdotal evidence, there's way too many sightings for these things to be extinct. Uh, there is no scientific evidence that they still exist out there. I would love to believe they are possibly still out there. It is like our Loch Ness Monster, right? It is this sort of mythological creature. Neil's happy hunting ground is thick, pristine Tasmanian rainforest. A perfect place, he says, for tigers to distance themselves from humans. W will it be the same tiger you bring back? Yeah, so, I mean, that's the point of this, is we're going to work... It won't be a version, it'll be the same. It should be the same. So we're working very hard to make sure that whatever is created at the end of this is as much a, a Tassie tiger as the real thing. We've got to understand, just accept the horrible reality that we caused the thylacine to go extinct, and that's it. We should just not revisit that again. It's gone. Professor, if I, if I fall off my perch tomorrow, could you bring me back? Uh, we, we can't bring back dinosaurs. Oh, that's a bit cruel. And it is not just the Tassie tiger, though. The dodo is also being looked at as a candidate for a potential comeback. So watch this space.